Hey, it's Ken from Moonpot Creations, and today we're going to have a lot of trouble making something over a six-month period that should have taken about three weeks. So this is just one of four buildings where I have wood at. Leanne likes to jokingly call me a hoarder and I always tell her, no, I'm just a fine collector. So here they are. These are 33 inch white oak cookies. I got them about five years ago when a tree collapsed in town. They gave me a call, asked if I wanted some of it. I've made a few bowls out of it and I got some of these right here, these cookies. I went out and cut them. Actually, one of my, I think it was our third date, Leanne helped me load these into the truck to get them back to my house. <laughs> it bruised up her legs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of these cookies and we're going we're gonna to try or attempt to make a pretty nice coffee table out of it. <laughs> Let's get started with this. These things are heavy. <laughs> When we first got these cookies, I couldn't even lift one up and roll it, let alone pick it up and put it on a table. It was so heavy. Now that they've been driving for about five years, we're gonna see if I can lift this sucker up on a table. I gotta get the uh, CNC out of the way. By the way, that's a Gatton CNC. And I put these pieces of wood on the side right here to help with getting the wood chips to stay in there. Yeah, it didn't work. So I did get it up on the table, now I'm positioning it, and then I realized the screws on the bottom of my, my gantry are in the way. So I'm sitting there thinking about what I need to do, and what I need to do is go to Lowe's or to Ace Hardware and grab a couple of new screws. And that's what I'm, I'm thinking about right here as I, I batten down this piece of wood. I ran to tractor supply and got a bag of quarter 20 one inch screws and put them on up there. I still had to start from the back there so I could get it to clear because that cookie is so thick. It's about five and a half inch, six inches thick. Because of the height of it, I had to control the CNC manually right here. That's why it doesn't have a dust shoe on it so I can see. But it, it has its drawbacks. First of all, it's really messy. I mean, these were going everywhere. And you just saw that I accidentally went down on the cookie. I meant to go down, but I meant to go further off of the cookie there, but that's okay. That little notch in there is going to go away because I have a lot to cut off of the top here to get it flat. I had never flattened anything this large on my CNC before, and it was going fairly well. You can see right here, it's getting fairly flat and going, and I'm still doing it manually, but in a minute, you'll see me. I'll switch over, and I'll start having the machine do it. Now you see that I have the dust shoe on the CNC and I have the machine doing the actual cutting for the program. You'll see me go back and forth checking it uh, quite often if I uh, let you. But we're going to flash a little bit forward and see it a little bit more flat. And then we're going to talk about me getting a little bit too cocky and uh, what happened. I was doing this and I hit zero to do another pass and the blade was spinning and went down into the cookie. Uh, that's not supposed to be like that. That's not a 45 degree blade right there. You can see it's bent. Gonna have to order another one. I don't just have to change the bit. I had to go change my pants. Now you're not gonna see all these little wisps of wood, but you still wanna clean them up. But I get them all cleaned up as best I can. Don't wanna poke them through the resin or anything. I'm about to do something that all of you are going to freak out about, but it's a necessity for the, the project that I'm looking to do with this cookie here. And you'll see how come I'm taking the bark off as we move forward in this project. This took quite a while because white oak has this membrane under the bark that is laying against the, the actual wood of the tree there. And you can see me scraping it off with the chisel and it took forever.
I think in all it took me five to six hours just to clean this piece of wood up enough that I could start sanding it and then filling all them cracks and whisks with resin. Even after all that cleanup, I realized sanding, it wasn't ready for it. So I had to switch over to a wire brush. And that wire brush really did a good job getting all the little whiffs of bark off of there, I guess. I'm not really sure what that stuff's called. Once I sanded it, it was time to seal up this big crack here with some uh, corrugated plastic cardboard, and I sealed it up. I'm not sure if I did this prematurely yet because I still have to fill all those little cracks on the other side. So once I get this all sealed up, I go ahead and I flip this sucker over, and I start filling the small voids and cracks on the top of it. When working with resin, it can get everywhere. And what you really don't want to do is sit your resin project on a $3,000 to $5,000 piece of equipment and something go wrong because resin does get everywhere. And I have a moment of sheer panic here and I run and go get some plastic and yeah, I throw it up under it. And it pays off in the long run and you'll see that in just a bit. If you take time and prepare when you're working with resin, it's going to pay off. You're not going to ruin your project or any of your equipment. So make sure that you're preparing because sometimes things just happen. These little cracks are taking up a lot more resin than I thought they would. This is almost a half a cup of resin I put in here so far. I just hope that I taped it up good enough underneath. I wasn't sure where the resin was going, but apparently it's going all the way through. So I'm gonna stop doing that. <laughs> I'm just gonna let it sit there. This, uh, this should contain it on here, I'm hoping. I'll end up having to resurface down there, peel that off, but this one does fill up. So we're just gonna stick with that one. I'll finish that one another time. I thought I put enough tape on the bottom. Guess I did not put tape on that one. Oh well. I wasn't sure what to do at this point, and I had some crazy idea about taping this up with metal tape and then flipping it over, and yeah, I, I, I just don't know what to say. Tis, uh, oh my, hey, it's not stuck to the table, that's the best part. I'm glad I ran out and got this done up. So the good news is this big one and this one are now probably sealed. Uh, if there's no resin in them. I just need to fill them back up and then we can move on and I can start filling all the small little cracks. This is going to take a while. Uh, so yeah. You can see all the cracks I filled or I attempted to fill. Uh, there's still a lot more there, so I kind of gave up on that. I have a plan of attack to fix all that down the road, and you'll see how that goes in just a little bit. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and fill in the big crack. You can see I already put some in. It hardened up, and now I'm going to put in the big pour here. And I used, I think, probably about... 3,200 ounces. I ended up having to mix up a little bit more just to get it to the top. And I don't even get it up to the top of the crack on this. Um, once I get it all poured up, I let it sit for about 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes, and then I hit it with the blowtorch just to get all the bubbles off the top. 
Whenever I edit my videos, I notice things that I do wrong. I may say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, or I may want to change up how I did it next time. It's a learning experience every time I do a project. But there's always those individuals that need to make a derogatory comment or tell me what I'm doing wrong. I encourage those people to start a YouTube channel, do a video, make sure it's perfect, send me the link, and I'll go over there and I'll thumbs up it and leave an encouraging comment. I use the corrugated cardboard to block the resin from leaking out everywhere. Unfortunately, it is very hard to get off. I've even sprayed it with mold release. It just sticks to the resin. I'm really not sure where I learned this little trick of using a heat gun and a chisel to get off the big pieces of resin, but man, does it work good. As I fumble around trying to get this corrugated plastic cardboard off of here, makes me realize why after every time I use it, I say I'll never use it again. And then I forget and I use it. Now that I've got it flipped over and all the corrugated cardboard taken off, I'm gonna seal up the sides and then I'm gonna fill the larger cracks with resin uh, I have a plan for the smaller cracks later, as I said earlier in the video. As every woodworker knows, it's important to put a little bit of your heart and soul into a project. And when it comes to my projects, I need to put a little bit of blood into it. Oh yeah, that one down to the knuckle right there. Ah, uh, damn it, that was stupid. Hmm. Well, give me a Band-Aid. All right, got my makeshift Band-Aid on. Get back to work, and we'll start flattening this. If you're not really sure what just happened, let me explain it to you. There are Sharpie things on the router where I was chiseling, and I kind of pushed my finger into it, and it cut me. At this point, I was kind of done filling cracks because I wasn't feeling I was getting anywhere, so I started to flatten this thing. And again, it doesn't quite go as planned, and I'm still not sure why it did it, and I'm getting a little bit frustrated at this point. Damn it. So again, I don't believe this was equipment issue i think this was a ken moon issue as in i don't think this thing was tightened down well enough and i think it kind of moved in there and caught and just destroyed it so gotta get another one boy this thing's costing me a lot of money so looks like i gotta get a new router this one you can see it is totally jacked it's not coming on i ended up fixing the router threw on my 2.5 uh, inch flattening bit threw it up on the cnc and got this thing flattened out it's actually got a super smooth finish wow The CNC worked like a charm after I took my precision gauge and made sure that it was trammed up flat. You can see there's not even hardly any lines on there and that's pretty good. The big issue with using the two and a half inch flattening bit is the dust collection doesn't work and this is everywhere. It took me about 45 minutes to clean it up. Here's the, the cookie. I'm bringing it over to my table and we're gonna start filling this up. So as I'm looking for the resin, you see the water there? 
it's all the way down over here and back there and it goes all the way over there and it's coming from my ac machine right here for some reason it is leaking and it's all over the place if it ain't one thing it's another i had some big cracks that i still need to fill in once i flattened it out and opened them up uh, then what i'm gonna do is we're gonna grab some two to one and then put some acetone in it sorry about saying acetate last time had a lot of hate about that one but i mix it up and i start putting it on the wood and what that's doing is filling in all those small holes and cracks that are in the wood i'm going to do a few coats of that probably three or four So I've got something planned that's either going to step this thing up or completely ruin it. But before we do all that, I need to go ahead and sand this thing down and get it, all this stuff sanded down. So let's go ahead and get that done. Ah, the joys of sanding and grain. Boy, this took about 45 minutes to do and I just used 60 grit. But it helped me think out my day. I'm usually sanding or doing stuff about three or four in the morning till about five, maybe six o'clock in the morning. And then I head back in, work on editing for about an hour, and then I head on to work. What I do next is put a quarter inch round over around the entire cookie. Then you may see the little burr box right there. That's a cuts all burr. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put little dimples all over the top of this thing. And then we'll fill it over with resin. Like I said, to the next level or ruin it completely. I used my Tezzer laser to cut this little template out and I started doing these circles all around the top. They were just a guide. It took me about 48 minutes to do this. And as always, my famous last words, I'm either gonna make this epic or I'm gonna screw this thing up. So this doesn't seem to be working very well. I'm gonna have to figure out a different way and a different angle to come at this think the big takeaway from this is the router doesn't go fast enough to do a good job at cutting these out because it's burning it and it as you see it's catching this is about two weeks later I tried a bunch of other stuff and I landed on this little die grinder right here with an angle total time so far is about two months on this project and I'm not sure I'm any closer to getting done than I was when I started Putting all these dimples in took about four hours or more to get them done. Then I had to go back and sand them again with a finer burr, so it took a long time. Then the time came to start sanding all these dimples and it really wasn't working out well. I tried a lot of different methods to get into those dimples. So I took to the internet and asked you guys what I should do, whether I should fill them with a red resin, a black resin, or should I just leave them clear uh, and just continue to sand them, which would take forever, as you can see in this clip. You guys came up with a lot of ideas, but two of them intrigued me. One was a radiant uh, polka dot, but I decided that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to see these dimples. And so what I decided to do was burn it. That was the other suggestion and that gave me a lot of options because I didn't have to sand as well and it would cover up the black burn marks here. The one issue this does cause and I should have known about it is as I'm burning it it's opening up all the cracks and it's also melting some of the resin that are in those cracks and it causes me to have to fill those again but I'm just going to dump resin on it and hopefully that resin will seep into those cracks and then we can go on with it. Whenever I'm doing a project, sometimes it hits me and I want to do something else as I turn away from my vision. And then this one is no different. I originally thought about a flat table there and then I thought about the dimples. And right now I'm thinking that it needs a larger round over on the outside of the cookie. So I may do that. I know this is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Let's throw some resin on here. We still got a long way to go. This is just the base coat. I still have got another 
flood coat or two to do. And what I'm using here is tabletop. And I really should have done acetone and resin 50-50 mix because there's a lot of bubbles that keep coming up. I ended up throwing another liter in here and that makes about two liters. And then for the next hour or so, I'll be on bubble duty. So we're entering the home stretch with the tabletop here and it's time to do the sanding to get it ready for the final coat. And that's what I'm doing here. I sanded it up to about 120. I had been debating about the small round over, so I put it on there, and then I decided to go ahead with the larger round over, and I think I made the right choice. What do you guys think? I cleaned the whole thing off with some denatured alcohol, and it's time for the final coat of resin. Uh, you have to use your hand to work this stuff in, or it'll start spreading, and then you have to work it on the sides, and then you let it sit for a few hours. Got to make sure you get all the bubbles out, though. I had originally planned on doing one more coat of resin, but it looked so good that I went ahead and flipped it over and I took off this tape. I sanded it up to 180 on the backside, and then we used some Rubio Mono Coat for the finish. I let the Rubio Mono Coat sit on it for about 15 minutes and then I wiped it off clean. You gotta make sure you get it all, that's the key. And I'm done. I found the base of this table coming home from work one day on the side of the road. It's a standard sewing machine, and I thought it'd make a good base for a coffee table. But as I bring it in, I have some visitors and a little bit of trouble. What are you doing in here, Clark? Get out. Get out, Clark. Out, out. Get out of my shop. You know better. Doing. Get out of here. I don't want you pooping and peeing in here. Uh, look at this fool. Hey, and what, Oreo, get out. Out. Get out. Oreo, no. Get out. Get out. Out. Clark, don't eat those shavings. Come here. You can't get away from me. You're not. You're, get out. Open this door. Get out. Get out. God. Shut up, Clark. Those little jerky asses. I said, get out of my shop. This is getting old. You guys are going to end up pissing and pooping in here. I want you out. No. Hey, get your ass out. Go. Go. Oreo, you too. Get out. Get out. Stay out. Damn it. And as I turn around, get out. Out. Get out. You too. Hey, get out. Oreo, get out. Get your butt out. Oh my gosh. Well, there's something having goats, I guess. So, flash forward a few months, and here I am. I'm using the wire wheel to get all the rust off of the metal and it's going pretty well but i decided to go ahead and take it apart at this point just so i'd have an easier time when i paint it I went through about four wire wheels trying to get all the rust off of here and it actually worked fairly well. I guess I could have gotten a sandblaster, but I didn't want to spend more money doing that. Altogether, if you count the time I got the rust off and degreasing and wiping it down and painting it, it took about four hours to get this base complete. I use a flat black on these because it's going to match the furniture that is going to go near. And it wasn't a minute uh, dry time here and then I can put it all back together. And this went fairly easy. To connect the base to the table I decided to use inserts and I was terrified that they wouldn't line up and the screws wouldn't go in correctly. But spoiler alert, it did.
Guess what? 